farmer had come home, it was well after sundown. He was greeted at the door by his dog and his wife. He hugged and kissed his wife and kneeled down to his dog and rubbed the skin behind his ears. He took off his coat and gloves and rubbed his raw cheeks. His house was small and mostly empty, four rooms in all. There was a fire in the fireplace, which had nearly gone out by this time, but it was still warm in the house. His wife sat him down at the table and brought him bread and hot soup and coffee. She took his coat to put away. His dog lay down beside him. He'd gone to town that day on business. His wife had made requests for the store while he was there, and his boy asked him to bring hard candy. It was a 12-mile walk into town, and he had decided against taking the horse. It was dark when he got up that morning, dark even after he finished breakfast, dark when he started off for town. When he had finished all his business that afternoon, he went to the stores for the things he was told. He did not forget the hard candy. On his way home, he carried packages under his arm, not big packages and not heavy. Before he left town, he stopped at a fruit stand to buy an apple for the road home. It had become almost a tradition. He fished out his nickel and traded it for an apple, and thanked the grocer by name and shined the apple on his shirt. There was a bank across the street from the fruit stand. Normally, the farmer walked by it as if it didn't exist, but today, it seemed to stand out to him perhaps for the way the sun gleamed in the marble. He stood there a while, studying it, as if it was a piece of art. There were few automobiles on the road, so he took careful notice of the black one that pulled up. It stopped suddenly in front of the bank. A man jumped out of the back. He recognized the man at once. Old Ben, he called him, or Rich Ben, others called him. He ran up the stairs into the bank with a slip of paper in his hand. A second later, he came out without it and got to the back of the automobile and was gone. For a moment, the farmer imagined a com comical picture, a man running around holding in his arms a large bag, five feet tall and six feet wide, with money overflowing from its top. The man ran from one place to another where more money was piled on, and then he ran off to the next place for more money, trying to balance the bag as to not drop a single dollar. That was old Ben with his money in his arms, but here was this farmer with nothing in his hands but an apple. While he ate, he told his wife about seeing Ben in town. She asked, which Ben, young lanky Ben or old rich Ben? Old rich Ben, he said. He had a spoonful of soup. You know, I really don't get something. I don't get how there is some men in the world who get all the world's riches, and there are other men who don't get a bit of it. I don't like to say it's all up to chance, but don't it seem that way? What do you mean, the world's riches? What other riches are there, he asked. Old Ben, he has all the money he'll ever need, and more of it. You don't have to worry about what to eat next year, or the year after, or the year after. You don't have to spend days sweating in the field, or nights freezing in bed. He got up from the table and took his bowl and spoon to the sink and came back and sat down to finish his coffee. He held the mug for a long time to warm his hands. He sipped it slowly. The room was beginning to get cold. The fire was nearly gone. His wife came over to him and held up an apple core before his face. She said, I took this out of your coat pocket. Why was it there? Don't you know it would rot out and cause your coat to stink? The farmer took it from her and laughed. It's for a boy's collection, you know. Oh, she said. Last month it was pine cones, and now it's apple cores. Don't you ever wonder why he collects those things? Never once, he said. Suppose boys are better behaved nowadays, though. When I was a boy, I collected mice tails and frog legs. You did not, she said, and took back the apple core. You better get over here and get this fire going before it's out completely. He took a while to finish his coffee, and then he took it to the sink. He went and knelt down by the fire, and took two logs from the stack and set them in the fireplace. He blew on the embers and poked them until they flamed. He stood up and brushed off his hands. I suppose you can leave that apple core out for him to get tomorrow, he said. I believe I'll go and check on him. He went over to his boy's bedroom and opened the door, slowly and without a sound. He looked in and could see a face beneath the covers in the firelight that ventured there. He walked in and kissed the boy's face and then left and shut the door behind. He
He went back to the fireplace and sat down in a rocking chair there. He pulled off his boots and wet socks and sat there rocking, stretching his bare feet in the warmth of the fire. A while later, he reached back behind him and took a small guitar from his case. He strummed it to a tune he'd heard and began to hum. His wife sat down across from him with her knitting and began to work quietly. For a time, they sat there alone, her working, him humming and plucking a tune. Even though it was cold, it was still a beautiful day today, he told her. No clouds in the sky. Yes, such a beautiful, clear sky. She did not look up or say anything. She smiled and continued her work. You know, I really feel kind of sorry for old Ben, he said. I reckon he's just one of the men who missed out on the world's riches.